I have a very fun video for you all today. In this box is a Game Boy shell that I designed using AI. This is a video that is gonna be going out at the same time as a video going out on my main channel where I was playing around with Adobe's new AI software. This video is not sponsored, but that one is. But go and check it out, because it's really fun. And in this box is the shell that I designed using the AI software. And my friends over at Retro Modding very kindly printed the shell for me so they were able to make my AI creation come to life and I am so excited to see how it looks and because that video on my main channel isn't about building the actual Game Boy I thought I would just do a dedicated second channel video showing off the actual build itself so here's the IPS screen and here is the Game Boy and this right here is the shell let's take a look at it Gary over at Retro Modding did a great job. I'm so excited. Let's see. Oh my goodness me. Look at that. I love it. It actually just looks like a bunch of stickers that, that a kid might have stuck on their Game Boy back in the day. Oh man, that is so perfect. It's so impressive. And as well, obviously, it isn't actual stickers, so they're never going to wear down. It's as much on this shell as the logo is. Okay, so let's go ahead and build this Game Boy. So it's gonna start with this DMG. And if you wanna get into modding, the DMG is where to start, or, or possibly the Game Boy Pocket or the Game Boy Color. To be honest with you, just a Game Boy. I just did a video on my main channel modding the PSP with an HDMI mod, and it was just so complicated and so difficult to take apart. Whereas the DMGs and and to be honest, any Game Boy is so straightforward. In fact, the DMG is probably more complicated than the Pocket in the Color because it has two motherboards, whereas the, uh, or it has two PCBs rather, um, whereas the uh, Pocket in the Color, they only just have one. Once you've removed all of the six screws on the back of the DMG, I can uh, just set them off to the side and then we can open up the Game Boy, just like that. And you have a ribbon cable up here and you just sort of gently pull it apart. And we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll tackle the back first just because it's really straightforward and we can pretty much just put it straight into the new Game Boy shell and then that half will be done. This IPS screen kit mod does require some soldering, but it's very small amounts of soldering. And so if you haven't done any soldering before, then it's probably, again, a really good one to go for. And they're not too expensive and you basically can't go wrong with it. So there we have it, removed all of the four screws holding that board down. We'll take a quick look and inspect it and see if there's any corrosion. No, there is absolutely none. That board looks pristine. I'll give it a quick brush with a toothbrush before we put it in again. But yeah, I was a little bit worried because these contacts were ever so slightly rusted um, and there are no contacts in here. So I will have to go and grab some of those. But yeah, I just wanted to get that out because we can pretty much set that to the side and that half is done. The other thing we will need as well is this little metal housing. So I'll go ahead and remove that too. And again, that's just four Phillips screws. So it's a very, uh, it's a very straightforward device to take apart. And it's, uh, it's a really good one to build up your confidence with doing any sort of work. There we have it. I'll give that a little wipe down as well. But actually, that is in really good condition. I would say this Game Boy probably hasn't seen much use. So I'll definitely keep the shell and use that for a Game Boy restoration in the future to one that's maybe a little bit too far gone. Right, this next bit is rather unpleasant. There is so many screws to undo. So I'm gonna go ahead and just speed through this, but it is just a case of unscrewing them all. Okay, there we have it. All of the screws are removed, and now I can just very gently lift out the motherboard, and that, again, looks pristine. It really is in very, very good condition. And so are these button contacts. They will need a little bit of a clean, but they, they're, they're generally really good. I mean, there's a little bit of dirt and stuff on them, I think what I'll probably do is off camera just go and give everything a little scrub in the sink. After all, I am going to be using these buttons and membranes on this new Game Boy mod. So there we have it. Those are the buttons out. We then have the, uh, the two boards here. We've got the power switch as well. What I'm going to go ahead and do is clean all of these up in the sink with some hot soapy water and a toothbrush. And, uh, and I'll give these a nice brush down with a toothbrush as well. And uh, yeah, we can get to the reassembly. Wait a minute, I'm being a dum-dum. This, I do not need anymore. I completely forgot about that. Okay, <laughs> back in a sec. Okay, I am back, I've cleaned all the buttons. I have something to report 
on the buttons, but let me just carefully pour this isopropyl alcohol first. The, uh, the D-pad button membrane had broken all of the little kind of like, the, the, the raised bits had just broken off, but I found this bag of like spare parts that I have. For now, I'm going to just give this, uh, this motherboard a quick clean with some isopropyl alcohol and the toothbrush. Give it all a nice old scrub so that it will hopefully last for many, many years to come. Make sure you give the contacts a good old scrub and the, uh, the cartridge slot too. Get it all nice and moist. And then uh, don't forget the headphone jack as well. I believe this is called a daughter board. You got the motherboard and then the daughter board. It's kind of cute. And I'll go ahead and give this one here a clean too. And there we have it. That's all nice and scrubbed up. So these are the buttons that I will be using from the original one. I mean, well, at least at least we're going to use the D-pad and these two buttons because they're good, and so is this. But this has discolored slightly the start and select membrane, and I'll use the power switch too. But let's see if we can do a bit better for the start and select. Let's have a look. Uh, well, actually, that one. That one's much better. I don't know if you're going to be able to see, but it's just that the tip of it is... Um, a little bit more yellow on, on the one from the, the DMG we just took apart compared to this one. You might not be able to see that, but that one's definitely gonna do the trick. And let's find a, a nice D-pad uh, button membrane. Make sure it's all nice and clean. And I'll do the same for the start and select one as well that we just took out. And luckily Retro Modding wraps everything in this really nice soft brown tissue so we can uh, Go ahead and just use that to wipe the table down. Okay, so we shall take the shell and just place it down like that. And we can go ahead and pop the D-pad in and the buttons just like so and put the new membranes in or the nice clean membranes looking much better. And then what we shall do is take a look at this screen. Now there is gonna be a little bit of work that we have to do to get it to fit into this shell. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is cut up the front of this shell a little bit, just removing a couple of little screw posts which are gonna get in the way of the new screen. So it's quite straightforward, you just sort of chop them off like that. And I think that is actually the only ones that you need to remove. Yeah, there we go. So this this now sits in there like so. And we now need to put the screen in. Now usually it comes with a 3D printed bracket if you order it from Retro Modding. Maybe it doesn't just come with that by default. I actually have a vague memory of also having to cut this sort of like little piece for the power switch. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that as well. I think that stops it from being completely centered. So now if I pop that in there like that. I'm going to assume that basically pushed all the way up to the top with the uh, with the edges kind of centered like that is going to be where this is going to need to sit like that or something. Okay, here's my plan. It's actually been a while since I've done this, so I'm I'm just kind of remembering how to do it. I'm going to take a little bit of Kapton tape and I'm going to just sit it down on top of the screen like this. There we have it. Right, and what I'll do is I'll just make sure that the screen is centered, at least where I think it needs to go. And I shall just stick it down like that so that the screen is nice and secure. Now, I obviously know that that is not as secure as it needs to be, but it's gonna help just test the alignment. So the D-pad and the start and select button have fallen out. So let's go ahead and shovel those back in. And now we can take this and just connect up the ribbon cable. There we have it. And we can set that down. Now we need to solder in the speaker, but we're gonna, get, we're gonna do that in just a second. What I wanna do first is just check that that screen is aligned, because then if it is, I'm probably gonna just put a couple of dollops of hot glue either side. The next thing to do is grab this ribbon cable and we can go ahead and just connect it into here. Uh, question, which way does it go? I think it goes this way. We, again, we'll find out shortly. There we have it. Okay, so now what we're actually gonna do is just fully assemble this back piece. But before we assemble that, we need to obviously give this a little clean. So we'll take some 
Mr. Sheen. I'm quite low. Let's uh, let's just give that a wipe down with this microfiber cloth and make it look all nice and shiny. Okay, and now my whole room smells lovely. Let's go ahead and sit this down into the Bame Noi. Okay, so there we have it. Right, next the power switch goes in and then we can take the motherboard and set it into place comme ça. Okay, and there we have it. Right, so now what we can do is take this whole front assembly and just connect the ribbon cable, which is quite a tricky thing to do, but I actually think that this is the best way to go about it. There we have it. Okay, so that is now looking like a Game Boy, but what we need to do is put some power into it and see where the screen's alignment is. But as I said, these contacts are all a little bit dodgy. In fact, this one at the top is okay. So we shall use that one. But yeah, these bottom two, pretty dodgy. So I'm gonna try and find some better ones. Hooray, I found a DMG shell with three absolutely perfect battery contacts on it. So let's go ahead and get these bottom two out and we'll give them a quick clean with some isopropyl alcohol, just to make sure that they're really nice and shiny. Sound like dank pods there for a minute. And then the final one, just go into there like that. Okay, so there we have it, all the battery contacts are in. So, let me go and get some batteries. Oh, ho, ho. I totally know what I've done. I'm a big, big dum-dum. I forgot to clip the screen in. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, let's connect the screen now. There we go, okay. Okay, there we have it, right. Let's try again. Boom! <gasps> the screen alignment is perfect! Right, let me get the hot glue gun out. Wait a minute. Oh, God. Oh well, okay, so two things we need to do. The first one is we need to remove this uh, screen protector and then we can just set it down there like that. And then the second one is actually just install the bracket. So it's gonna go in like this and it's just gonna perfectly align everything just seamlessly. Wait a minute though. Oh! <laughs> I was like, maybe we have to cut the edge off, but it's actually got a little like chamfer just there, a little a little edge for the um for the D-pad. Perfectly aligned. Oh dear. Okay, I suppose there's no harm in just putting a little bit of tape over it like this, just to um just to sort of secure it in a little bit further. We'll do the speaker um, after I've put all of these screws back in. Okay, so I have the soldering iron. It's just finishing heating up. Let's go ahead and remove this speaker. It might be a good idea to just put a brand new speaker in, but I actually don't have one on me right now. But there we go, as simple as that. And I'll just give it a little bit of a clean, wipe it down, just to get all of the dirt and debris off, which has um, come through the little speaker grill. We'll just chop off the ends so that they're nice and clean. And we should actually be able to just sort of thread that straight through. Okay, and then we can take the two wires and it doesn't matter which one goes in which hole. And we'll just thread them through like that. and bend them down a little bit. And then we can just take the solder and just solder it up.
Boom. Okay, so now let's test if that is all working. So there's a ribbon cable we need to ensure is plugged in. There we go. And then we can plug in this whole bottom assembly. There we go. And then we can test. Boom. Okay, so I'm now just gonna put all of the screws back into the Game Boy and we can put the screen lens on and we're done. Okay, so I've got a bunch of stickers here. I have no idea what ones I have. Do I have any DMG ones? There's a Game Boy Light. Oh, there's a barcode. That one could go on, that's kind of cool. Uh, or there's the phone number one. Oh, I like that one. Wait, oh, there isn't actually meant to be a sticker that goes in there. There was actually just text in that bit, but they've, they've removed it on there. So let's see, do I have a... Oh, there we go, the GH one. That's a serial number for a DMG. So I'll go ahead and peel that off and just stick that in there. I actually believe I got sent all of these stickers by a very kind viewer. There we go. That looks the business. So I wasn't able to find a glass one, but I was able to find this plastic one, which is actually in really good condition. So I'm just gonna use this for now and I'll order up a glass one. I also think that having some scratches on it does, does add a little bit of charm. Uh, and it certainly, it certainly makes it look more original than having a really shiny glass one. But that being said, a nice glass one. Okay, and on it goes. Make sure there's no dust on there, but I'll have to take it off again anyway. Give it a little wipe. Oh my goodness. It's a real Game Boy. Right, let me grab a game. Can you hear that? That is the sound of the rub rubber membrane not being inside. Ah! Get in there and stop making such a fuss. There we go, okay. It's done, it's done. Where's this little shovelware game? Let's put that in there, okay. Bang. <laughs> oh my goodness me, the AI Game Boy. Look at that and, oh my God. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot one more thing. <laughs> okay, luckily this one is quite a quick fix. I just need to remove this small piece of plastic here because the contrast wheel is now the wheel that adjusts all of the different colors and the settings on the Game Boy. So you can just actually remove that whole thing. I'm just gonna get a knife to clean it up a little bit because basically this wheel is uh, a little bit thicker. So let me just uh, tidy this up a little bit. Okay, there we have it. It works now. So you can go through all of the different color palettes and stuff, which is just so cool. I love the green one so much. I think it's so retro. But yeah, and then there's, uh, there's lots of different colors you can choose from. The pink one's also really nice. And there's lots of other settings as well. If you like hold the button down, it opens up a menu, which is really cool. You can change the brightness and, and battery display as well, which is quite nice. But yeah, there we have it. The AI Game Boy is now a real thing and it looks absolutely awful in the best way possible. I really hope you've enjoyed this little second channel video. Go and check out the main channel video if you haven't already. And that is gonna do it for us today. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye.